days are starting to blend into one big blur of awesome. <laughs> I don't even know what day it is anymore, and I'm starting to think I kind of prefer it that way. Just a quick recap from yesterday, we hit the sand early and ripped around while the sun was still low, taking advantage of the empty dunes. We shredded, we got lost a little bit in some virgin sand, and then stopped over at the staircase on our morning run. Midday I took a quick solo adventure on the dirt bike to go explore the area and I found out eh, I probably shouldn't venture too far out with no water or actual riding gear on. Then we headed over to Lake Egan to relax, play around with our RC cars and just kind of live in the moment enjoying the amazing scenery of St. Anthony Dunes. To cap off the day we shredded around Thunder Mountain area while the sun put on quite the show. We sure have been getting used to this routine so let's see what another brand new day of St. Anthony Dune life has to offer. Good morning, welcome back to our St. Anthony Dunes series out here for the week. It's now Thursday, so day four of our trip. Well, technically five, but day four of duning. So we're out here at Idaho Dunes RV. Got a handful of cars, not really any major issues or breakdowns, so that's good. Woke up this morning, caught the sunrise. That was pretty freaking awesome. I don't know what made me get up at five o'clock this morning but apparently i got enough sleep so got my coffee i'm i'm ready to freaking dune so uh only one in the group i think won't be joining us chad and the family i think are gonna hit yellowstone today and uh, well, we'll still have a decent sized group not really sure of the plan uh i don't know if we have a destination i think we're just gonna hit the sand and just go so i'm gonna get the cars fueled up and uh do a 8 a.m departure here from uh from the campground so let's go hit it. This morning was good. The dunes were dry with just enough tracks to follow but still pretty smooth. The sun was low and there was nobody out there. We've pretty much had the dunes to ourselves for this whole week and we've been loving every minute of it. So right before we left, Rick and I chatted about leading. I don't ever mind leading but it's nice to follow someone else's lead every now and then so 
Uh, I led the ride for about 35, 45 minutes and then handed it off to Rick once we got out to the area he referred to as the Narrows. It makes sense because it's kind of the middle area of the dunes that leads out to Dead Horse Bowl and Choke Cherry area. We didn't waste any time sitting there, so we just kept on going towards the Devil's Dune area. Just when things were flowing so well and we were getting into the good stuff, my car sprung a major fuel leak. As you can see, it was a pretty substantial leak, but at first I had no idea. As a matter of fact, it took like three more minutes of driving for me to even notice anything was wrong. Fuel was spraying everywhere, including right on my exhaust. It's a damn miracle nothing sparked and ignited the fuel. I just think of how many times I've been shocked by just static electricity in the sand. I did, however, start to notice the car would bog down on the big hills. I watched my wide band and it confirmed we were definitely lean, so I pulled over to see what was going on. It was getting bad. After spraying Dan with gas, we pinpointed the leak. The fuel supply line that feeds my auxiliary injectors on my intake tube had ruptured. I had to figure out a way to get it fixed because we were a very long ways from camp. I ended up cutting off a section of my transmission vent line, which fortunately was 3 8 fuel line, even though I needed 5 16 but it would work. The only problem was it was low pressure fuel line, and it was also full of trans fluid and sand. So I used the pressurized fuel at the port to spray fuel through and try to clean it out, and then what ended up working best was a screwdriver and a vag wipe <laughs> to get it nice and squeaky clean. It took me a bit of time to get the hose on there just right and to feel somewhat confident about it. It was in a pretty tight spot. This is a rarity because he's always helping other people. <laughs> After we stared at it for a while and we put our seal of approval on there, we decided to head straight towards the Sand Highway Trail at the edge of the dunes. I wanted it so badly just to keep doing it out to Devil's Dune, but I didn't quite trust that fuel line to hold 50 psi of fuel pressure. It was kind of a low pressure fuel line. I really didn't want to catch my car on fire either.
It was still a pretty fun ride though. The dunes at the edge are pretty fun and the trail is cool too. Just watch out for those drop-offs. We were really far out in the dunes, so that ride took like 20-30 minutes just to get over to Egan Lake area. Then I made a really stupid mistake of getting on this narrow sand trail. I thought it just hugged the edge of the dunes and brought us right back to camp, but instead, it brought us somewhere else. We ended up on some dude's farm. Once again, sorry guys. sand trails and got back over to the dunes. That was some adventure. an adventure. A little while later, Anna and I headed out by ourselves to do a little bit of exploring while the rest of the crew was out on a dune run of their own. We weren't able to join them because we hung back to replace all the fuel lines on the car. So we wanted to check out the smaller dunes that were in the direction of Sand Hills Resort. So instead of hanging a left out of Idaho Dunes RV when you get to the dunes, we'd go right. We didn't want to go too far since we were by ourselves, but those little dunes looked pretty cool. We saw a group of guys playing around in some older SUVs. Uh, this area isn't like the big dens. It's not fast and flowy, but it's a pretty scenic area with trees, vegetation, and some grassy areas. If you had a side-by-side -side or quad, it would be a fun area to go play around. It reminded me a lot of coral pink dunes in Utah where you have dunes, but also sand trails between the trees and brush. We started getting out there pretty far and I was just thinking we shouldn't get too deep into this stuff, especially since we were out there by ourselves. And then that damn fuel pump issue from a few days ago resurfaced and showed its ugly face. Uh -oh. No! What the fuck? The car shut off and wouldn't restart. What just happened? Can we blow up again? 
Oh, I have fuel pump. We have fuses. Except this time, it wasn't just a blown fuel pump fuse. We didn't even hit a bump this time. Fuck, the fuse is now blown. <laughs> That's even worse. <laughs> well, well, well. Well, the fuel leak got fixed, but we got new issues while we were out exploring. I think the fuel pump just went out. <laughs> We've got a spare, but it's way back at camp. We're gonna let it cool down, and the pump's turning on, but it's like, it's, you can tell it's not making a lot of pressure. So we're just gonna <laughs> blow bubbles <laughs> and make the best of it until uh, hopefully the car starts, we'll find out. I let it cool down for about 30 minutes and then it fired back up. And then it died again in a rock garden. After messing with the plug on my fuel pump relay, thankfully the car fired back up. We hightailed it back to camp, and then we got stuck behind those guys in the SUVs on the entrance road. Luckily the car didn't break down, blocking the way. Well, we made it back. I don't know what happened, but I'm thinking my fuel pump's going out. I said I have a spare, I'm probably gonna throw it on there, but I'm just gonna let it idle here for about 10 minutes, and See if it stalls. Well, I tried letting it run for like 10 minutes to see if it would die. It didn't die. Time to start chasing some wires. In the meantime, it's too hot to do it anyway, so ice cold beer time. Just gonna freaking chill and camp for a little bit. Ponder my problems. <laughs> I ended up pinpointing the issue to be a spread terminal on the fuel pump relay connector, which overheated last season when the relay failed. So after a little tweak, the problem luckily never resurfaced. We got more issues. <laughs> Gary was out on a run and broke a stub axle, but he got back, but now he's just trying to fix the, uh, the remaining broken parts, like the brake caliper and whatnot. Yeah, we gotta tap these holes. Clean everything up and make it better. I got a little storm system rolling in here. I don't know, it's kind of clear, uh, clear weather over there, but we haven't had rain all week, which is kind of weird, because the last time we were here two years ago, it rained almost every day, every day or every other day. But Gary's got his car just about back together. And uh, yeah, we're all kind of hesitant to go out now. So we think all our cars are gonna break down. After we got the cars back in working order, we just decided to stay in camp, hang out and have a good time and save it for tomorrow. Sandals and socks, what's up with that? Oh wait, there's no socks. I can't <laughs> light up the shoe. <laughs> That's sexy. Real white, white, just burnt to crisp. Transparent as shit. The sun is going down, that means it's like freaking 10 o'clock at night. We're cooking some dinner right now. And the cars are still covered. And it looks like, I don't know, this storm is still questionable. But straight up, it's blue skies. So we're gonna make some dinner and uh, eat. Get a good fire going tonight. We got a good supply of firewood over here. So that should be good for tonight and tomorrow. We're leaving on Saturday morning and that should be enough to, to get us through the night. Even though we had our share of issues today, we worked through them and there wasn't really anything that ruined our day. We're dinners, we make shit happen. At the end of the day, we still had great weather, an amazing sunset, and good company. The cars are ready to go, and we still have one more day to get out there and burn some more fuel. Pretty awesome sunset. Holy shit. Look at the field. Yeah. <laughs>